Hey guys, my name is Joey Thomas, entrepreneur and small business educator here with 17 Hats. I am excited to welcome Leslie Cervantes to this series titled The Business of One, where we dive into how solopreneurs find success in their small business. Welcome, Leslie. Hi, how Joey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Well, thank you for coming on. This mm -hmm. is going to be a fun interview. I've known you a very long time, Leslie, I think 10 plus years, right? Something like that. Something like that. If we say yeah. it's any longer than that and we sound old, so, and we're not. We're not. We're not. Totally okay. Not. All right. So thank you so much for coming on. It's going to be fun. Um, so first of all, what do you do, Leslie? Tell us a little bit about your background and what you do. Sure. So I have a degree from the University of Houston uh, in fine art photography and digital media. Nice. I have a minor in art history. And how far back do you want to go? <laughs> so um, when you were born. No, I'm just yes, okay. it was no, a that's good. Day. Just, just a little bit about your background and what do you what do you do today? OK, so um I guess I've always been interested in photography. I had my first camera like in third grade, always took pictures, but just took pictures of things that mattered to me. Um, so I never thought I'd make a career out of it. Awesome. And um, when I when I started trying to figure out what I wanted to do in life, I went with <clears throat> what has always interested me. Wow. And um, I guess to kind of <laughs> say that, I chose graphic arts because it was still in the arts and I thought I would make more money doing that. But the problem was I was horrible at graphic <laughs> and, um, and I, I, but I had to take a photography class and just from there it clicked. So, um, that so using crayons for all your graphics. Was that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> back in my day yeah I know right we actually had to draw our own fonts and stuff so nice. anyway yeah that that's too much so Very we cool. yeah and so um but what was amazing was I actually took a photography class and that was it um I think it was in the middle of of the semester the the president of the photography um what is it called program was actually my teacher my professor and I had no clue and he pulled me aside one day after class you know the whole Leslie can you see me after class I'm like mm, okay <laughs> and 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 he asked me what my major was I said it was graphics he said well you need to change it now you're a photographer and you know he was just saying like the way that I analyze photos and see photos and um that I just needed to do photography and it really that was the first time that anybody had told me this like this is for you awesome. and it felt really good because I loved it and I just never thought that I could make money doing anything yeah. so um in, in the photography industry not everyone starts off with a photography background. I certainly didn't, right? My, my background is in psychology. And so I, I didn't at all. And so when, when you had that photography and arts degree, do you feel it prepared you to run a business in photography? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Money well spent, right? <laughs> well, <clears throat> what I did learn and what they taught there, I remember, um, they were very minimal on like how to use your camera and like how to actually run a business. It was more about how to get into museums, how to create a conceptual like theory, like what is your artwork about and how are you connecting to an audience? So it, it was, there was a lot of thought that went into our portfolio and what we were building. Um, and so in that way, you can't really teach that. So I remember asking my professor, why aren't we learning the technical stuff? He said, well, that's the easy part. We're teaching you how to think. Uh -huh. Anybody can learn how to use a camera. So once I got my degree, I had to go back and really, really learn how to use a camera. Like, yeah, yeah. not that I didn't, we, we, like, we made our own pinhole cameras. I have a medium format camera. We shot on large format cameras. Like I understood the concepts, but, um, 
and okay, this was back in when we had dark rooms, like digital cameras. Were, <laughs> were you carving images on rocks? Is yes. it that long ago? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like even the light meters and everything were like the manual ones that just went like that, you know? Have yeah. you ever no, okay, too much. But I, I mean, I love spending time in the dark room and it really helped me understand um, things like Photoshop, Lightroom and, and understanding light. Mm. And so I feel like when I connect with people or when I photograph them, because, well, now I'm a portrait photographer, I, I still have that background in my head, like looking and studying like Rembrandt and, um, Ansel Adams and, you know, all the greats and their, their lighting, their shaping, everything like that was just, it's still impressed, impressed upon me. Is that a word? Is That's that a, correct. okay. Then we'll go with that. Yeah. <laughs> so were you always a portrait photographer? Uh, how long have you been a photographer, by the way? Um, professionally since 2007. Okay. Um, at the time though, my so I graduated in 2003. I was already married. I was married in college and my husband decided to join the military. So when I was two years away from graduating, um, he, he joined the military and how do I say this? So at U of H, it's like a, a block program. Mm -hmm. And so once you get accepted and they only accepted eight people, you get to try out once a year. If you don't make it, you have to wait till the next year. So I tried out and I made it, but you get blocked in for two years. You can't do all your classes and, and like, you can't take any extra classes. You can only take these classes yeah. for the next two years. So he was stationed in Germany. This was literally a um, couple months after 9-11 happened. And, um, and I just decided to stay. I got accepted in the program. And so we did long distance. Um, wow. And I finished, I finished my degree 2003, moved to Germany. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to become a fine art photographer. So I went and I hustled and I took all my, all my, um, like my thesis and everything and went to different art galleries. And I actually got a solo show in Germany. And um, then I realized I'm not going to make any money <laughs> doing this. <laughs> and um, so I decided to start taking portraits. And that was a huge learning curve. Mm. So I started doing portraits, supporting military families, maternity. I mean, anything I would do. I mean, I even, you know, learned the hard way that polarizing filters turn people orange and, you know. Mm -hmm all that fun stuff. So I, I really did a lot of learning and um, I started my business over there um, through MWR, which is um, morale, welfare and recreation for military um, active members and also their family members. So it's a support system for, for them. And so that's who I worked through. And then when we moved back to the States in 2009, I started my business and then um, I met David and Luke Edmondson and started doing weddings with them and fell in love with it. And I did that for almost eight, nine years. That's where that's I met where, you. That's where we met was in the wedding yes. world of things. Awesome. So now, now you're back into portrait photography, mm -hmm. right? Kind of come full circle again. Yes. And, you know, in, in running your business in, in today's you know, just environment, right? The market, the way it is, how people um, see your work, absorb your work, interact with you. What has been your biggest challenge uh, in growing your business? What area of business has been your biggest challenge? Um, I, I think there's been two. Okay. Um, one of them is, is finding clients who appreciate artwork. Um, I feel like there, it's kind of a, a I don't want to say a dying breed, but just that understanding and appreciation of what quality photography is, just because that's so deeply rooted in me that um, people really don't care. And so you have a good picture of them. They don't care if the sky's blown out or if they're overexposed or anything like that. So I've found that that's been a huge challenge um, for me. 
And then the second, which kind of segues into it is marketing is how I market myself. Um, because trying to convince people why I, I was different, but they didn't get it. That was been, that's been kind of like the biggest challenge that I've been working on in the last couple of years and educating people about the quality and things like that. And, you know, and I would say with both of the things that you mentioned, they kind of both fall under marketing, right? Because part of marketing is finding that target client, the one that values what you put out. Mm-hmm. Right. And then uh, we're just finding clients in general. And so uh, it kind of falls under the same thing. But I will say in following your work and following your journey on social media, you know, you create these beautiful portraits and with a lot of emotion and and I love all of that. And then and then you come on the scene <laughs> on TikTok and social media. And it is the most hilarious stuff <laughs> I have ever seen. And so and for those of you who are watching. Oh, sorry, who are watching, go check out Leslie's social media and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So you have put some time and some work into your social media, right? Yes. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, and most of it is just all out hilarious and, and which is so fun to watch because you have a, you have a brand that shows all of these gorgeous, beautiful images, but then you get to really know who you are behind it, that it doesn't have to be stuffy and serious. So what motivated you to start doing things like TikToks and the Instagram shorts and reels and stuff like that? Sure. So my daughter, long time ago, she told me that I needed to get on TikTok. And I did not want to because she had convinced me to get on Snapchat for my business. And I was on it for a while, like maybe two years. And and then I I just discontinued it. It just didn't help my business. So when TikTok started coming around, she was telling me, you need to get on TikTok. You need to get on TikTok. It's amazing. It's fun. And then I thought, great, another waste of my time, right? And um, so she said, well, I'll, I'll make it. And then, oh no, I think I told her, why don't you, you start the account and then you can, you know, make videos for me. And that's what we did. We started off like that, doing some, some things. I had no clue what she was doing. So when she would just kind of set up the camera and then say, okay, we're going to do this. And so this is your line or whatever. And, and that's all I really know that knew that was the extent of it. And we hit some traction really quickly because this was early 2019 like before covid and so um we did a few a few videos were all over the place and then once covid hit she no longer did tiktoks for me anymore and uh it just it just went dead and my instagram was struggling too i, I couldn't grow it and then once COVID hit and we were all quarantined, I would get on my phone and I, and I was like, what is this app about? You know? Yeah. So I started like looking at, at videos and I mean, I don't know, I must've burned like a thousand calories a day just from laughing because it was hilarious and we weren't doing anything. And so, you know, I remember staying up to like one or two in the morning and I'm like dying laughing and I'm like shaking the bed because I'm trying not to wake up my husband. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, because it's just so funny. And then so that turned into me commenting and then, you know, getting um, starting to build relationships with other people. And then I thought, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try and see what I can do. And yeah, I had no idea that my personality was going to come out the way that it did. And of uh, I've definitely grown in, um, you know, in making videos, but I guess one of the biggest challenges I had in the beginning was exactly what you're saying. It's like my personality was so off the wall. And then like, I had these gorgeous pictures and it just wasn't clicking. So I've, I've been trying to work, you know, to merge the two, and, and so it, there's been a lot of growth in my videos. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I can distinctly remember when you came dressed out as a queen <laughs> and 
tried sitting on a chair. I won't, I won't talk about the rest of it, but I died laughing. That was fantastic. <laughs> and then, then I would find myself like, okay, I want to see the next one, uh-huh. right? What is she going to do next? And then you guys, you and your daughter started doing stuff together, yes. which was also really cool. Right. And so uh, it just became this thing for you, right? Now it's expected. Now you can't stop, Leslie. So right. you, have to, you have to keep doing it, okay? And so so just were you uncomfortable in the beginning as you started doing it? Or did you find yourself that you just fell right into it? Very uncomfortable. Yeah. I, How did you get over hmm. that? How did you uh, figure a way to get over that? Just repetition? I think because of COVID and not having anything to do um, really gave me time to explore that. And, um, and then also getting reactions, you know, from other people, I wasn't getting any feedback on social media, on Facebook or Instagram. Like I told you, Snapchat was dead. I really wasn't getting much from it. And so the fact that I was doing something and it was working really catapulted me to just keep trying. Yeah. How did your clients feel about it? Because, you know, there's a lot of people listening right now that want to do it. They want to get in on it. They, they enjoy it. They watch TikToks for hours. They, you know, they want to do it, but maybe they're a little introverted or maybe they are, you know, have some anxiety over looking dumb, you know, <laughs> like mm-hmm. over these TikToks, or maybe they just can't coordinate with those TikToks <laughs> in, in the way that it works. Right. Cause I, 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 I wouldn't know where to begin. Right. So what did your clients think when they started seeing it? So um, because of my age group, (laughs) a lot of my clients were not on TikTok. 17 to 22, is that what you're saying? (laughs) Yes, Joey, that's correct. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) I keep Um, telling myself that too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, They weren't on there. And for me, that was freeing because I could try different things, you know? And so I was really connecting with people who were just looking for a connection during COVID. Yeah. And, and so actually now um, a lot of my clients and people in my circles now are fans on TikTok and I'm like, oh, there goes another one. Oh, there goes another <laughs> one. And so um, oddly enough, I'm actually very reserved around people. Uh, it takes a lot for me to like open up and be silly. And so I, even to this day, I keep getting I didn't know you were funny. <laughs> You're so funny. Like, and yeah. so they tell me that they, you know, I can't wait for your next video to come out and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh my awesome. gosh. Okay. And so um, it's actually helped me because I think because in person, I'm so reserved. Um, people, people were kind of hesitant to talk to me. Yeah. And so now this is kind of like opened it up and people are coming and they tell me that they booked me because of my TikToks. Very cool. You know, I, I love it because I can see it being such a good icebreaker um, yes. in conversations, uh, both amongst peers and with clients. And so um, we need all the help we can get in today's market where everything's about social media and people get inundated with millions and millions and millions of, you know, sources of uh, media, right? right? And we have to do something to show who we are. We have to do something to stand out from the crowd, but really, really, most importantly, be our authentic selves. Right. You know, and people get to see that. Right. And it does add a lot of value to what you're doing, because it's not just about the work you're creating. It's about the experience they're having, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think your clients can look forward to having fun as well and goofing around and just laughing you know, right. So for, for the audience and for those people who really want to get started or maybe even improve what they're doing right now, um, what are a few things that you can share? I know you just did a workshop on, on social media recently. What are a few things that you can share that might help someone today? Sure. Um, first I would pick a platform where your clients are at, um, where whether it's um, TikTok or Instagram. Um, some people are on Facebook still, mm-hmm. and 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 figure out the trends and kind of what's working for that platform. I feel like they're all kind of merging. I know Instagram, 
you know, started reels because of the success of TikTok. Yeah. Um, but it's a little bit more, it's, it's not as user-friendly as TikTok. Um, so I would just say kind of pick where you want to create and then, um, and then learn those platforms, play around with things. You can save things as drafts and, and just keep, keep playing with different things. And once you're okay with publishing something, start publishing and getting feedback um, and seeing what people, what's drawing people to you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I did a test once, um, the same, the same ads on Facebook and the same ads on Instagram, just to see, just to look at the stats. And every single time it was the same, it was a completely different age group mm -hmm. and, and they would, and they're engaging at different times of the day. And, but it was very distinct between those two audiences. Um, and so doing a little research like that can, can go a long way. Would you recommend that if people are engaging with you, that, to comment back or to say something or to interact with them? Or do you just, just post and don't worry about the comments and such? No, actually, that was going to be my next thing okay. is that when people are interacting with you, that's such a great time to start building relationships um, because then that turns into trust and then they get more mm -hmm. curious about what you're doing. And then you're also invested in them as well. And um, I encourage people to ask questions and I'll respond in a video. So um, there was this series that I did in TikTok where um, I would say, like, let me know what you struggle with in photos and I can help you how to pose. And so I got all these people that asked me, my shoulders are too broad. I have a double chin when I smile and blah, blah, blah. And so what I would do is like respond in a video and teach them how to not look like, like that. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> and um and some of my posing videos actually did really well I think one of them hit 100k views and the other one like 300k views which at the time I thought that was really cool um yeah and so I think your audience kind of starts telling you what they want to see and and what I've noticed is people do like behind the scenes for some photographers but for me it it's just when I act silly that, that people really, I think they're just used to that and expect it now. There's no turning back, Joey. There is no turning back. <laughs> it's got to get, it's got to get more ridiculous as the time goes by. And it, it's, oh, and now it's so much easier, but before it was like costume changes where I'd have change in one and then the next scene I'd change in another one and then change back and then change back, you know, but it's definitely grown and it's gotten a lot easier um, because now you can, you can record clips and go back and re-record in a different costume and wow. you know um learning the dances and lip syncing and all that stuff <laughs> it did take me a while to get there yeah. and yeah so very cool yeah so in the next 40 years you can expect to see <laughs> even if your dentures you know falling out you know during the tiktok i'll still be roller skating you'll got to do it right <laughs> You still got to do it. Awesome. Do you have any, any, any one last tip for the audience? Yeah, I think that sometimes you can be effective with your, um, with your time that you spend on the social media app. Um, so what I like to do is I'll go through and see what's trending um, as far as videos or sound effects. And if I see something that I like, I will go in and save it. So when it's time for um, a video recording day, uh, we'll do anywhere from like two to 10 videos per day. And all of those ideas are already in there. And, you know, you just take those sounds, whatever sound is trending, no matter what it is, and just tweak it to what you're doing. Very cool. Well, it, it's, it all sounds fun. I, I might dive into that world one day, one day I might reach out to you for some help. Um, but that's, that's awesome. Thank you for those tips. Those were amazing. You're welcome. And, you know, so I want to ask you just a couple of things just about yourself, just as we wrap up here. All right. And I told you, you know, I'm not going to share with you what they were going to be. Right. So just to, just to, just to hear you here. So if you could turn I'm five, one, if you can, if you can, yeah, <laughs> five, one. I don't know about that. <laughs> and so, so I know my personality's bigger. I, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, if you could turn back time, 
and talk to your 18 year old self, <laughs> what would you tell him or her? Sorry. To my 18 year old, to your self? 18 year old self. Uh, wow. I, I told you I'm going to get you this one. So <clears throat> at 18, um, I think what I would say is you're on the right path, girl. Just keep having faith in yourself and moving cool. towards your goals. Yeah. Very cool. Yes, absolutely. Um, one more question. Mm -hmm. If you Me? were to write a book tomorrow, okay, what would you write about? Um, uh, Actually, I, I'm starting to write a book. Oh, there and, you go. So yes. you dropped it news right here, guys, live. <laughs> yeah, so it's called Faith in Photography and how I found healing through the art of photography. Very cool. Wow, well, that sounds mm -hmm. incredible. Um, I know that that you are a 17 Hats user. Yes, I am. And, you know, I there are tools in business. We talked about how marketing is difficult and, you know, we are, we're running this business by ourselves. You know, we wear tons and tons of hats and we have to be everything right. Uh, mm -hmm. From the janitor to the CEO, it's all kind of on us. Right. And when, especially, yes. when, especially when you get started, you know, um, tell me how, how for the other listeners who do use 17 hats or is considering using 17 hats, uh, how has it helped your business? So like I said before, I have an art degree. I don't have a business degree. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of had a general idea of what I needed to do. I needed, I knew I needed to bring in money. Um, and that was about it with my business um, knowledge. And with 17 hats, I will say in the beginning, I was not using it to its full potential, but the more that I dug deeper, um, I've created systems and seen the power of 17 hats. Yeah. Um, and what that has done has helped me to um, not only categorize um, the different aspects in business that need to get run, but also setting up these systems and seeing how things are running. Um, just, I, I think in the beginning, I was just kind of going with the flow, like maybe sending an invoice here and there and things like that. And now I actually have systems in place that help, um, that help me, but also help the client experience. And then to see how all of that ties in together from, from bookkeeping to online scheduling to, you know, invoicing quotes, questionnaires, all of those things, I was doing it the hard way. I was trying to do everything myself and, once I let go and realized that 17 hats can do all of this, it has actually freed up my time to do marketing, to do things that I really love. And that was another thing too. I couldn't do marketing because I was so busy running the back end of the business. That's right. And you know, another side of that from a different angle, I, I would hire assistants and people mm. who cost me a lot of money per year to do half of what 17 hats does. And that's when I realized the power of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so, because I was taking all my time training and managing certain people when most of what they do can be done here. And, you know, don't get me wrong. People are very important in, in business, but um, there was just so much that could have been automated and just, just to kind of calm the chaos of it all. Right. right. Or you could hire somebody to do other things, you know, right. you could, yeah. I, I feel like, um, now that my time has been freed up. Oh, that's what I was going to say, because a lot of people say, I don't have time to do social media. I don't have time to do this. 17 hats has helped me like free up a lot of that time and really invest in the growth, um, of my business rather than working in my business. 
Well, thank you so much, Leslie. No, thank was, you, Joey. That was fun. That was it fun. Was. And um, hopefully what we're hoping to do is to invite you back at some other time. And let's talk more and dive a little deeper into different aspects of the business. And for all of you guys listening, if you have not subscribed to the 17 Hats channel, do so right now and like this video. And we'll be back with more interviews just like this. Uh, diving deeper into the business of one and how you can manage uh, your business um, like the pros, like Leslie. And so thank you again, Leslie. I appreciate your time. Till next time. Thank you, Joey. All right, Bye.